Cassin Schmidt uh, at Wilson Court on 350 feet from the big uh, jumbotron that's there. And yes, I realize that it's there forever. In my lifetime, I have to look at it. But it weighs our awareness. And also, after almost a year and a half, it, it made us realize that it's a nuisance. We get comments that it affects the value of our property. Um, the the Anesthetics Report says that uh, in Philadelphia, if a billboard, not even a digital one, a billboard is within 500 feet of a residential property, that it decreases that property value by approximately $30,000 on the average home. Relating that to La Crosse, uh, we've got a home, there's only 11 homes in Wilson Court. There's one that's been for sale for over six months, and there's no takers. They got their price $10,000. It's still on the market. So it, it, it does have an effect. People look at it and say that's a negative. There's a property on Highway 16, a commercial property, that's valued at a quarter million dollars. They can't sell it. They'd like to, but there's a billboard on that property. Uh, you know, Howie's was the same thing. Here's a tavern that was trying to do something with billboards there, and those leases go for 30 years. So the point is, billboards are a nuisance. We have more than enough stock of billboards in the city of La Crosse. We do not need more. Um, so what I'm asking is, from residential properties, 350 feet, which I can realize because that's what it is, my diamond table, that is too close as any residential property. We're asking for 1,200 feet. Uh, that's basically four blocks in the city of La Crosse. Um, if you look at the county ordinance, it's 2,000 feet. If you look at what Anna Alaska is proposing, uh, I think their meetings tonight, in fact, they're proposing 2,000 feet to residential properties from billboards. Now, this is not EMUs. This is strictly billboards. So the, the point is, I am asking for a, a basically an amendment that increases that 350 feet to 1,200 feet, which we think is a realistic number uh, for the residential properties in the Crocs. Uh, we don't need the big flashing uh, lights in La Crosse. You know, go up to one of the prettiest sites in La Crosse at the Granddad Bluff. And what do you see when you're up there? You see the big flashing sign. If someone would go in the areas that have been looked at, you'd see them from City Hall. You, the mayor could look at it from his window. So we don't need those things in La Crosse. It affects the value of property. Our housing stock in La Crosse is already depreciated. And we don't need anything that's going to take it further downhill. So please, I'm asking you to support the uh, amendment to increase the 350 feet to basic billboards, not EMUs, to 1,200 feet. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Cashishman? Uh, Mr. Sir, you're, you're up. Um, and once again, reading from the revised 2008 sign ordinance, unless I'm misreading it here, it says electronic billboards, billboards shall have a spacing of at least 1,000 feet in radius. Uh, I'm not sure where you came up with 350. That's what was in the ordinance, the committee's uh, proposal. Right now is at 350 feet to a residential property. The new one. Oh, not, not the new one. Okay, because I was the, trying the to say it's, all, it's pretty feet, much yeah. close to where you want it to be. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I Gentlemen, can, can we have the city planner weigh in on this because he's the guy that right wrote this? I, I think that's 1,000 feet from another electronic billboard. So not a thousand feet okay. from a the house. They had to be a spacing of a thousand feet between electronic billboards. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Cash and Schmidt? Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have two minutes and 36 seconds left on the proponent side. Uh, next speaker is Mike uh, Kyle. And 2039 Wedgwood Drive, representing North Rangers Building, Jackson Plaza, and Three Rivers Plaza. And you have two minutes and 36 seconds. Go ahead. Oh, thank you and good evening. My name is Mike Kyle. I am a lacrosse property owner and a lacrosse business owner. The proposed sign ordinance isn't nearly as restrictive as I'd like to see, but uh, it's certainly a step in the right direction. As a manager and owner of multi tenant buildings, I know the importance of good sign policy. I authored the sign policy for Three Rivers Plaza. Our approach is to keep sign, uh, signage size appropriate for business without disrupting the character of the neighborhood. 
our signage policies have actually improved our ability to lease spaces. Uh, for example, Three Rivers Plaza, which has uh, a sign policy, is 100% occupied. You see, our tenants don't have to compete with each other for attention. Uh, consequently, our, our properties are pleasing to look at, and they add value to the neighborhood. Uh, where would you rather live? Uh, next to a sign that's low to the ground, suitably lit, and maybe has landscaping around it? Or next to a sign that's too big, too bright, and too flashy? Cities without an appropriate sign policy end up with a lot of clutter. Unfortunately, the city of La Crosse has a lot of loud signs and signage clutter. Please pass this reasonable sign ordinance to make our city a more beautiful place to live and a more beautiful place to visit. Thank you. Any question? Oh, we have a question for you from the <coughs> council member of the third district, uh, council member Chris Olson. Thank you. Um, you said that you put the sign ordinance together for Three Rivers Plaza. Yet, in your plaza, you have four structures, or four signs, and a uh, structure, and two temporary signs that don't fit into this ordinance. Are you prepared to take them all down? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, thank you for coming. And I have a minute and 17 seconds left for the performance. Our uh, next speaker is Marvin Waters, 142 South 14th Street, representing 360 Real Estate Solutions. You have a minute and 17. I will be brief. Uh, we have both residential and commercial tenants, uh, so we have to please both parties. We have to pe please people living in homes, in neighborhoods, and we ha also have to meet the needs of business owners. The way to do that is good, solid policy. This policy that has been created is good for the community. It shows a lot of leadership by the group that created it. I thank them for the time and effort in uh, spending all the hours on putting it together. And I encourage you, the council, to pass this policy. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Okay, next speaker is Andrew, Andrew Lundry. 1028 South 7th Street, representing himself. I'm going to pass. Okay, thank you. Next speaker I have is, and we have 43 seconds left, is Paul Borshine, 2 Copeland Avenue, Suite 201, representing Board of Construction. And you have 43 seconds, unless the council extends your time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As a contractor in the cross, and as a business owner, and as a, uh, a landlord, I guess I would like to uh, reiterate Mike and Marvin's comments. Uh, we have not seen it as a detriment uh, to our tenants, and none of them have expressed that with the signage requirements that we put together with the city. Mike did offer of them, worked with the planning commission. Um, we did have some variances. I guess I want to point that out to the council and to the public uh, that we did have a, some signs there that. Uh, we had to come back to the Planning Commission and ask for variances. Uh, there are very uh, strong reasons. It might have been a national account, uh, something to that effect. And we were able to work with the Planning Commission and Council on those. Can you wrap it up, please? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to point out was, I'm, as a parent, I'm concerned about safety with the recent uh, pedestrian deaths. All the stimulus that we have in the environment as we're driving, I'm very concerned about the amount of uh, distraction that we have from electronic, not only billboards, but probably more importantly, all the flashing uh, on-premise signs. Uh, thank you for everyone's effort on this. I know it's not an easy issue, and uh, I'm here to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Borshank? Oh, yes, we do. District number one, Andrew Richmond. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Borsch, I know that you've attended a few of the Northside business meetings, quite a few actually, when I've been there. Um, if you were to, um, and I'm, I'm hoping down the road you do this, to uh, redevelop uh, that exit three um, area of Ridgewood Plaza, um, and I spoke earlier about creation of a business uh, zone up there. Would you be opposed to having some changes uh, in that area? If you were going to develop, you'd want to enhance it with some higher signs to create more 
business coming in and visitors to the community. So I'm 